What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades. Today's feature blade is a Best Tech product. What we've got in the house is the brand new Best Tech Paladin flipper folder. Look at this guys. This is a beautiful, beautiful knife and forewarning to you all, this is going to be a super gushy love fest sort of review because I absolutely love this knife absolutely love it everything about it i love this knife it's me and this knife forever in love okay um so what we've got here is the best tech paladin and this is part of best tech's quote unquote budget line in d2 tool steel for your blade steel and g10 uh handle material for with a stainless steel liner lock and uh, these knives are currently selling for $52 if you can find them. I know that Blade HQ has these in stock. That was the first place that I saw them drop, and that's where I ordered from. But the other Best Tech dealers should be getting them very quickly, and I think they're going to be very popular. Uh, as with the other models, they are available in uh, a couple of different blade finishes. Um, a satin finish with or without the black stone wash DLC sort of um, on the flats here. And then I've also seen them besides the black G10, I've seen them in a tan G10 and orange. All right. Um, this particular model is the BG13A-2. Okay. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, going into this review, that at the end of May, almost June of 2018, uh, this knife right now is my budget knife of the year. Now, who knows what will happen the rest of the year, but good Lord, if something's going to come out and beat this knife, it is going to be spectacular because I just love everything about this knife. I have connected with this knife not only... Uh, as far as um, ergos and utility and looks, but on an emotional level that I just cannot explain, guys. And I, I think that most knife enthusiasts will understand that. There is a knife out there that you have owned and used that you just connect with on such a visceral level um, that it's just, that's it. It's the it knife. And right now, this is one of those it knives. All right, let's set this thing down real quick. Bring in the packaging, standard Best Tech packaging here, uh, BG13A-2, and Paladin D2 Black and Satin. All right, let's knock out some specs real quick on this knife. It is a full-size knife, guys. Uh, blade length, you're looking at about 3 and 5 eighths inches or 3.6 inches. That's slightly greater than 9 centimeters. Uh, blade stock thickness is 140 thousandths of an inch or 3.57 millimeters. Your blade width at the widest, 1.06 inches or 27 millimeters. Handle length, 4 and 3 quarters of an inch or 12 centimeters. Uh, your handle thickness is 571 thousandths of an inch or 14 and a half millimeters. Uh, your handle width at the widest point at the pivot, 1.13 inches or 28.7 millimeters. Your closed width is only wider by the width of the flipper tab because the blade fully nests and that is 1.39 inches or 35.4 millimeters. Overall length about eight and a half inches or 21 and a half centimeters. Uh, your stop pin diameter 135 thousandths of an inch or 3.45 millimeters. Behind the edge thickness on this high flat ground uh, blade, uh, I averaged about 19 to 20 thousandths of an inch or about 0 0.5, 0 0.51 millimeters. Uh, handle to blade ratio, a very respectable 0.75, and your weight 4.48 ounces or 127 grams. All right, guys. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about materials on this knife. Uh, we're in D2 tool steel for the blade. I really like D2. I've always liked D2. And if you understand D2, it's a great 
blade steel. It is a semi stainless tool steel. It is high carbon, high chromium, and vanadium alloy, so it tends to be a very toothy and aggressive cutter. Uh, you'll typically see it rock weld in the 60 to 62 range, and what you get in D2 is good to very good edge retention or wear resistance, uh, good toughness, um, and decent corrosion resistance. Now, uh, being semi-stainless, D2 is fairly easy to take care of. Uh, with just a modicum of care, you can keep it free of rust. It will patina a little bit if you allow it, and it can rust if you don't take care of it. Uh, D2, you don't want to use it to skin out an animal and then put it away with blood on it. You want to clean it off at least. Um, but it, it's not crazy. It won't run away rusting like a... Um, just a basic carbon steel um, and it's a you know D2 takes a very fine edge it will hold a razor edge for a good amount of time but when it loses it it will hold a working edge for a long time uh, it's fairly tough as long as you're not using it in a high impact environment or with too thin of an edge uh, and you know it's it's just a great performing basic tool steel that has been around a long time and is in my opinion um, it's pretty good I like it uh, handle wise you're in machine G10 over substantial liners and I did I typically don't do this but I measured the liners on this at 67 thousandths of an inch or 1.71 millimeters those are substantial liners and I want you to look right here this liner lock bar has been relieved like a frame lock bar that's something you don't typically see in a liner lock that is a substantially thick liner lock guys and it is very strong uh, they are inset st stainless steel liners on this you can see the show side uh, has been weight relieved. The backside has not been weight relieved. And it's really, in my hands, it feels weight wise perfect for its size. To some people, 4.48 ounces may be too much, but this is a sizable knife, guys, and it's not too awful bad. Uh, all your small parts here are stainless steel. Uh, the standard sort of Best Tech B. Um, free spinning pivot and I say free spinning but I have messed with this pivot I have totally loosened it up from the factory setting and then retightened it and it never budged on me uh, so I don't know if that has been keyed now on these new knives or not I have not had this knife open yet uh, but I didn't have any issues with it free spinning initially uh, Torx bits down here, Torx screws down here, T6s, they seem to be a decent quality. I did put uh, the Weeha bit on it. Um, they're fairly deep and fairly tight. And, um, you know, you've got a stainless, bent stainless, polished, finished pocket clip here that it is in a relieved uh, inset right here and it's got two screws. It is not reversible for right or left and is tip up right hand only. So there you go for materials guys. That's pretty standard across this uh, Best Tech G10 D2 lineup and we'll pull out the swordfish here and although we've got a different look, different profile, uh, they are pretty much the same thing as far as materials go guys. I mean take a look at this. That's two very high quality knives you can get for $52. Um, beyond those materials, uh, you do have a single row ceramic bearing uh, pivot. You do have a ceramic detent on this knife and it is very smooth. Now let's go back up here and talk about fit and finish. We'll start on the blade. It is flat grind with a very high, very fine grind on it that has been slightly polished afterwards. I can find no flaws in the grinds, guys. Uh, the primary grinds are even side to side. The switch grinds are even side to side. The edge grind or secondary grind is even side to side. Uh, you do have a good working sharpening choil here that many people have already said they wished was a little more wide open so they could use it as a forward finger choil. 
but that is not a design flaw in my opinion it's just a personal preference and in this knife I don't miss that at all um, this knife does not scream I need a forward finger choil for utility use uh, this knife screams out to me I'm badass and you love me because I am so I, I, I'm not worried about that uh, you do have some very very effective uh, jimping on the back of this blade you can see that it is fairly fine and flat topped but I'm gonna tell you right now it grips uh, the way it was machined you can hear there guys yeah it really really grips and I really really like it um, so as far as fit and finish on the blade goes uh, like I say it's thin behind the edge it came very sharp even edge grind very pointy and pokey stabby piercy uh, no issues there at all fit and finish on this g10 on the handle fabulous uh, zero issues there uh, and the channel here this little aesthetic detailing there is a little bit of uh, milling marks that are left in there possibly on purpose because they are very very slight guys uh, but everything else on this is exceptionally well done as far as the machining goes and the fit of everything uh, I am gonna say it looks like to me um, different companies are doing their G10 differently and a lot of them are leaving an as machined finish where you'll see very like microscopic machining lines and you do not see that on this handle and I think it has been lightly bead blasted and if you'll take a look here in this facet where you see the layering of the fiberglass in this G10 do you see how it, that look is um, it's almost like Damascus that has been edged and that is an effect that bead blasting has on G10 where um, the fiberglass is more resistant to the bead blasting than just the epoxy is it's a very very attractive finish on this guys it's just it's just something else to like about this knife um, it's a very classy sort of understated look and the fit and finish is perfect the way that the uh, liners are inset on the inside of that G10 is perfect uh, there's no gaps back here at the G10 backspacer um, a very tight pocket mill in here for the pocket clip uh, you've got a lanyard hole right here that is substantial it is tubed through the backspacer uh, substantial enough for 550 cord if you prefer um, the small parts are finished well I mean just to fit and finish guys is is astronomically good for $52 all right let's go on to action and another place that this knife shines guys it is smooth 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 awesome detent and flipping action um, it is not too big of a flipper tab it is a, I like the shape of the flipper tab aesthetically um, and the shape works well for augmenting the action being mechanically efficient it is a slightly forward canted sort of um, overall profile on that flipper tab and that aids in mechanical efficiency along with the uh, geometric relation between the pivot and the lockup point that triangle that they form there uh, you add in a very good set of ceramic bearings on the pivot and the ceramic detent and you get a very smooth very explosive flipper action um, while this knife is not just totally fall shutty it is everything but totally fall shutty and it may very well get totally fall shutty because this is a new knife guys um, there is no radial or lateral play in the pivot 
Uh, the lockup on mine is probably about 40% and extremely solid on that heavy liner lock. And the centering is damn near perfect. So I'm very, very happy with that, guys. And when you, let's say we've gone through materials, we've gone through fit and finish, and we're going through action right now. For you knife enthusiasts that have been in this world for a couple of decades, think back 10 or 20 years and think. Did you ever expect to get a knife like this for $52, regardless of where it's made? Would you have ever expected what we have become to accept as normal in 2018? Um, I, I can't remember any time in the last 30 years of loving knives that I would have ever thought um, we would have seen this and it would have been considered almost normal but it is guys and this is uh, I don't care if it's made in China Chinese people need to eat too their people are not their government and those people need jobs they need to eat and in America we're lacking in manufacturing right now and if we can get a product like this until our um, National manufacturing catches up. Uh, I don't see any issue in this, and uh, it's just extre extremely well made. Now, as far as the ergos and utility you go, uh, this is a, what you call a trailing point blade. A lot of people associate this with an Indo-Persian type of blade, uh, of which it is a lot alike. This is a moderately rising trailing point. It is not extremely upswept. Um, it is. It has a nice substantial length of flat edge here, a sort of abrupt and defined belly, and very pointy tip. Uh, you can see that while not delicate, it does have a fairly thin tip for piercing, and it will readily pierce, guys. Uh, beyond that, uh, it is a very thin behind the edge with this flat grind that is very high, and it is a slicer. It slices very, very well. Uh, I honestly, I found it to slice just as well as my paramilitary two in S110V. And maybe, maybe, probably because of uh, the way the edge was ground, maybe be a slightly smoother slicer. Uh, because the edge on that PM2 is not the finest edge that I've ever gotten from a factory. Uh, but it is a slicer regardless, guys. Uh, the ergonomics on the handle nice forward uh, choil here that is not radically deep but is made to feel deeper by this wide uh, facet in here and with con in conjunction with the flipper tab uh, makes it very secure in the grip uh, a wide open center section of the handle here uh, the back of the handle here is ergonomic uh, it is sort of overall, it gives you a nice sort of a slightly curved look uh, and profile that fits the human hand, which is not straight, but curved. Um, the, uh, this is sort of strange to me. You've got this, uh, it's sort of a reverse thumb ramp here where the height of the spine of the handle drops back down to the blade. And in my medium-sized hands, that is where my thumb naturally falls, uh, which is behind the jimping on the blade. Now, that's a very, very comfortable place to fall. And if I was going to use this knife in a martial context, I would extend my thumb forward for uh, slashing techniques to help me rotate that blade around at the end of extension. And it would be devastating as a slashing slicer cutter, guys. I'm telling you that right now. Um, but I love this handle design, not only the look, the aesthetics of it, but uh, the profile of it. Uh, in my forward grip, it's comfortable. In a reverse grip, it's comfortable, guys. Uh, not the best thing for a draw grip, but that is a grip I very, very seldom use. 
uh, outside of a campsite and only then with a fixed blade knife typically. Uh, pinch grip, not the best uh, because there is sort of abrupt edge on the forward part of the handle scales so it's not super comfortable for that. Uh, but this knife to me screams martial use and that may be why it appeals to me. And I've seen a lot of reviewers that compare this knife to a couple of other best tech knives, um, the Scimitar and the Kendo. The Scimitar was a trailing point, sort of Persian-y type of blade profile, so you can see why we're being compared there. And the Kendo was more of a uh, standard Japanese Tanto blade um, with a more wide open and straight handle. And I get what these guys are, are, the reason they're doing that comparison, even though to me this knife is better than either one of those knives. Um, to me personally, I mean your preferences may vary, but to me personally this knife is better than either one of those knives. Uh, it's more appealing aesthetically, it's a better design in many ways for me. Uh, this knife is very modern in looks and profile, but not at the expense of utilitarian use. And that is something that I very, very much respect in a design. Um, if it's been done on a knife, it's been done a thousand times. I mean, knives have been made for thousands of years, guys. Uh, there's hardly anything outside of aesthetics or maybe some new lock technology or an upgrade in steel technology that's different on a knife. Uh, let's face it, a folding knife is a handle and a blade and they fold together and they've got a lock or they don't have a lock and they're going to be different shapes. Um, to make something aesthetically pleasing, uh, different and not uh, negatively or uh, adversely affect the utility use of it or ergonomics it is very very appealing to me and that's one of the reasons I really like this knife. Um, I love this knife guys. I love this knife. I love it, love it, love it. Um, what have I not talked about? I, I don't even know guys. I don't even know. Uh, did I mention the backspacers? GTN um, and it's got a very solid feel, uh, the, the thick G10 slabs for the handle, the thick liners that are uh, inleted or inset, and then that uh, nice G10 backspacer there gives it a very substantial feel in the hand. Um, it is radially machined here, you can see that. Um, it, it's just, guys, there's so much going on in this that is good and I really can't find anything bad um, you know there's some things that I might have done slightly different or maybe somebody else would for instance that forward uh, sharpening choil some people would like it to be more wide open to use as a finger choil and that's not a design problem uh, or a mistake it's just you know personal preference I don't find myself wanting that with this knife where somebody else might. That doesn't make it good or bad. It is just what it is. But to me, this knife is appealing on a visceral level with me. I don't, there is just something in the vibe of this knife, the design of it, its personality that it just, when I took it out of the box, I, it was instant, guys. I just, I just fell in love with the knife. I mean, I can't describe it. I know you know what I'm talking about. I know that everybody that is a knife lover has at least one of those knives that you just, I can take this knife and I can just hold it in my hands and look at it. And just look at it, guys, and just turn it over. And I'm like, God, that's that is that. Oh, I love that. And and this, I love that. And look at this. And the way this and this work together. And the way, you know, and then I did this over here, and I was and I was holding it, and it feels so good this way. And then 
when I open and close it, it's, oh, I mean, you get that with some knives. And this is one of those knives for me. And like I say, uh, towards the end of May here, uh, getting about halfway through 2018, right now, this is hands down with no competition, my budget knife of the year. And I think that says everything, guys. Bazon Blades will and can highly recommend the Best Tech Paladin Flipper Folder. Uh, everything about it, the materials, the fit and finish, the action, the ergos and utility capability of it. Um, it is just such a fantastically well done design and well done from a manufacturing standpoint. All right, guys, as always, I thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.